Welcome to Mindful of Tech. In this video, we're going to be beginning a new series that I would like to call Reclutter Your Life, in which we unbox some of the things that I have bought, often on a whim, sometimes with a little bit of remorse afterwards. Um, this, however, is not one such object. This is an object I have absolutely no regrets of getting hold of. I also got it for an absolute bargain price, cheaper than unboxed ones on YouTube, and I managed to get a fully inbox Sidewinder Microsoft PC control pad. Now this thing dates back to the old 15 pin method of input, no USB, nothing as simple as that. It's the old 15 pin that you often found on your sound card back in the day. And it provides, as you can see, a six button, quite Sega-like input, although very different from Sega in terms of its overall design. So uh, in this video, I'm not gonna be going too much in depth into you know the history of Microsoft and their development of peripherals or anything like that. There's plenty of information out there if that's the kind of thing you want. We are literally just gonna be taking a look at this controller, comparing it to some other controllers and seeing what is in this box. So without further ado, let's take a look. So as you can see here on the front cover there, wonderful uh, sort of 90s aesthetic. I think this thing came out in 1999. So it's just on the crossover between uh, sort of 90s and early noughties. You can see here that this Microsoft Sidewinder gamepad, very exciting font there, uh, offers full function with up to four Sidewinder gamepads connected. So it actually did have like a daisy chain thing on the top, you could daisy chain them through. And it guarantees, I mean, it doesn't say guarantee, but absolute victory, total control. I guess that wouldn't be something you can guarantee. Uh, designed for Microsoft Windows 95. Now, as I say, I'm pretty sure this thing is later than that. Uh, we'll see if we can find some dates when we go through it. But obviously it was compatible with Windows 95, Windows 98. And in fact, it's compatible with modern systems if you get a USB adapter. Um, so this is a control pad that can still be used. Um, I don't know that you'd want to use it in the majority of modern games, but for some of the older titles, it works very, very well. Um, so yeah, we can see here we have the European packaging, which obviously comes in the four different languages that European packaging always comes in. Box includes a CD-ROM, which is actually in there. So let's have a look. So again, absolute victory. Microsoft registered trademark Sidewinder gamepad. So I think the Sidewinder is also a trademark. Um, there were several Sidewinder products, including variations of this controller, as well as joysticks. On the back here, we can see that we have more buttons, more functions, more control. And plus the button, plus the function, plus the control. Definitely shouldn't be doing that sort of thing on YouTube. Um, we have an eight-way direction pad. We have our mode button. Or like for turbo and that sort of thing. We have our start button, it's a start button, and we have our shift M button. So this is like a modifier button that allows you to access further, further button, uh, further configurations. So say for example you're in sniper mode, you need access to a different set of skills. You can hold that shift button and map different keyboard buttons to the the controller. Um, we've got the six gaming buttons, very similar to the Sega six button pad. We'll have a look at that in a little while. We have our game port. So this is for daisy chaining uh, multiple controllers, up to four. And we have two trigger buttons. Now the triggers on this are really, really nice and were quite unique at the time. Um, also very reminiscent of kind of what came later in the Xbox. By no surprise, as I would imagine it was the same people uh, that went into the hardware development for the controllers and things for the Xbox. Um, and you see here, we even have an advert for the joystick. So as I say, these joysticks are very highly regarded even today. Um, you know, some of the, the ones that they did are very interesting, force feedback joysticks and all that kind of thing. Um, but unfortunately, I, I do not as yet own any of those. Okay, so here we go. We have um, a copyright 1997. So perhaps this was originally designed in 1997. Um, let's have a little quick check on Wiki. Uh, 
Yes, so in Claudia, according to Wikipedia, this thing actually did come out in 97, um, so hence the design for Windows 95, because Windows 98 wouldn't have arrived yet. Um, whether or not this is a early model or not, they actually continued producing these. Um, there was a second version that came out in 2001, which I think was just the same design, maybe some internals were different, and then we got uh, other variations such as the Sidewinder Pro, which came out later on. So is there anything else to look at on this box? No, this is just more absolute victory. Lovely purpley pink colour on the bottom. And everything on the uh, on the top. So we get a limited one year warranty with this. And we can see here it originated in Asia. And this is in fact the 1.0 revision. Uh, Win9x game port. European version. So let's get it out of the box, shall we? Okay, so in the box. We have gubbins, many gubbins, CD gubbins. So we'll pop the uh, gamepad off to one side for now. We'll have a look at that shortly. Let's take a look at the gubbins. So this is our driver CD. Not sure if this is the original packaging it would have came in. Oh yeah, no it is, that matches up. Very hot today. Um, so here we are with our driver CD-ROM from back in the days when these things were a lot more important than they are now. Um, obviously there was no popping on the internet and grabbing drivers back then, so you absolutely needed this kind of thing. And the fact that this comes with this is really, really handy for you know installing on a Windows 98 machine in this day and age. So that's our beautiful green but keep that out so we can keep looking at it. Our beautiful green CD-ROM. <clears throat> Interestingly, you know, already sort of feeling a little Xboxy there, I think, in that design. Um, so perhaps the kind of green Gatemer aesthetic that they settled on for the Xbox was kind of coined back then. We have our very nice registration form printed on very nice paper. And you can see here that we get technical support from the first call we make. Perhaps an early attempt at a touchscreen there from Microsoft, but none of those buttons seem to function. Speaking of which, I tried to pinch zoom an actual photograph yesterday. First time that's ever happened to me. So register now, get the support you need. I'm not entirely sure <laughs> what this imagery is about. Uh, I guess he's getting the support he needs from these two crutches there. But I mean, I would say the connotation of a term such as crutch is probably not not ideal in marketing terms. Like, you know, if you're having to lean on Microsoft support as a crutch for their bad hardware. But anyway, <coughs> here is the end user license agreement. Jeebus Christy, this thing's fat. Wow. Now, I'm assuming that's mostly due to different languages let's see oh, i see so this yeah this was for all the european countries licenses one so here we are with our grant of license so probably you know if you end up jamming it in your eye or something during a gaming session then microsoft will not take any responsibility for such thing yeah so the actual english license agreement is in these few pages. Um, you know, what's interesting is obviously license agreements now are still very much existent. Um, we just don't really notice them because we are clicking accept on them whenever we install new software, new drivers, etc. without actually thinking about it. Um, you know, but back in the day, this would have been something that, you know, gave much of the same thing. And again, I would say the majority of people probably didn't even bother to read it. But there would have been some people that poured carefully through their license agreements to make sure that they didn't break any of the terms of it, especially if you are, you know, looking to utilize that micro Microsoft support, you need to do so. Not really a thing that I ever got into. I don't think I've ever read a license agreement in my life. And finally, oh, not finally, save that to last, we have our Microsoft subsidiary information. This gives us the uh, postal addresses of basically all the Microsoft offices all over the world, or at least the companies that were you know, licensed to deal with 
Microsoft support in those countries. We've got all the different phone numbers. At some point, it might be interesting to have a little look on Google Maps and see if any of these offices are still in existence and indeed what they look like in, in this day and age. That's a, that's a good video idea, isn't it? Let's write that one down. If only there was uh, some way to capture this moment so that I could view it back and remind myself of my fantastic ideas. And finally, we have the Microsoft Sidewinder Gamepad Manual. Also including an internet address. So, you know, Microsoft obviously being one of the big proponents of pushing the internet forward in terms of building things, you know, straight into the operating system that allowed users access to the internet. So it's no surprise that they are already on the ball when it comes to actually giving people something to look at on the World Wide Web when they buy a product. So once again, this manual looks like we have six pages maybe of English telling us how to use the manual. So, here is some important ergonomic information. Before we even get to anything else, we have to be aware of the important ergonomic information. And that information is as follows. Some studies suggest that long periods of repetitive motion, hey, oi, oi, coupled with an improper computing environment and incorrect habits may be linked to certain types of physical discomfort or injury. These include carpal tunnel syndrome, CDS, no, CTS, tendonitis, tenosynovitis, and de Quarvain's tendonitis. Take frequent breaks while using the gamepad. If you feel aching, numbing, or tingling in your arms, wrists, or hands, consult a physician. Now that's, I believe... Uh, a kind of disclaimer that comes with pretty much every gamepad to this day. I'm sure all manufacturers have something similar in terms of wording. So, here we are, being congratulated directly by Microsoft for purchasing this gamepad. So that, that's very nice of them. We have purchased the latest innovation in Microsoft game devices. Your package includes Microsoft Sidewinder gamepad, which we'll get to in just a moment. Sidewinder profile activator which is on this CD here. Sidewinder Profile Editor. And Sidewinder Gamepad Online User's Guide. So there must be a link on that disc as well. Here we are, this is the 15 pin connector I was talking about. So you can see here, it's, uh, it sort of looks similar to, to a VGA connector, something like that, if you're similar, it's, uh, it, we'll have a look in a bit, um, if you're familiar with it. But yeah, it's the classic old school on your sound card connector. In fact, we've probably got one right here. Gamepad controls. So the controls varied massively um, from game to game. You have a profile thing on here, which does have several profiles for several of the mainstream games, quite a lot of profiles actually. Um, I had a bit of trouble with it. So I was playing MDK and it seemed MDK just completely overrode whatever Sidewinder was telling it to do, but I managed to get it set up. Um, and obviously back then you didn't have plug and play for games. You didn't have you know Steam with its game profiles. You didn't have Xbox that is just compatible with the majority of games on PC now. You know, this thing really did need some configuration before it would be usable. Um, the software that they give you on the disc, as I say, I didn't have any luck with, but I was able to configure it through games themselves. I guess the software is really for games that were only expecting keyboard and mouse input um, so that you can override those and sort of remap like you can do with Joy to Key and that sort of thing uh, nowadays. But we can see we've been over all the buttons, they're all in the box. How to set up your software, put the CD in, run stuff. And here's our technical support, so what to do if you need help. And that, that's it for the Englishness of this manual. Um, I don't think there's anything else of particular interest in here. So let's move on to the main event, shall we? Now let's, let's do this like this. That's more pleasing to the eye. So here we are. Microsoft Sidewinder itself. Ha. Oh, that's still got a security tag on it. So here we are. Let's put it back there. The Sidewinder in all its glory. Now, as you can see, this joypad. It's in very, very good condition. I was very lucky with this purchase. 
uh, box and everything. Box is a little beaten up. The pad itself is is near perfect. No bent pins, no marks, no scratches, nothing. All works exactly as you would expect. So as far as I can work out, there wasn't anything in this bottom bit. Um, it's just sort of part of the the molding, the packaging itself. And here we are, the joy pad in all its glory. So as you can see here, we have a D-pad, um, a kind of rocker style D-pad. Um, I would actually say the D-pad is probably the worst thing about this controller. Um, you know, in terms of moving forward and moving side to side, it can be a little jarring. I certainly had problems, so the only game I've actually played is, is MDK, and with this I certainly had problems in MDK with it. I will try it out with some other things. I would imagine for sort of side-scrolling platformers and things like that, it works perfectly. See on the back here, we have our triggers, as well as our serial code, and just underneath here, we have our port for daisy chaining multiple controllers together for multiplayer action. Now, looking at this device, you're probably already thinking that there's some similarities between this and the Xbox controller. And of course there is, because this is a Microsoft product, so it's very likely that the same people worked on you know, those, those products, as well as uh, the same um, sort of machinery and factory tooling and such would have been used in the production of them. So there's some things that you know, are very similar, like this top slot, um, which obviously we saw on the Xbox in the form of a memory card slot, the triggers, are quite Xboxy as well, although much, much shallower and just digital. There's no analog in those triggers. And the overall design itself, you know, fairly similar to the Xbox, so it's easy to see where that came from. Um, so something I wanted to do in this video, as well as just doing the unboxing, which we've just seen, is have a little look at some of the uh, controllers that perhaps inspired this and where that design went from there. So let's get that cable over there. Let's put our sidewinder. You can go down there. For so there is our sidewinder. Now as you can see we have this six button design ABC XYZ which may seem very familiar to anyone that played the Sega consoles back in the day being that we have obviously the Sega three button with our ABC which later became the Sega six button both for the um, you know there was a six button for the Mega Drive. I don't own one of those so I'm going to go with the Sega Saturn controller that I have here, which you can see is the six button design. Um, so actually we're, these are the wrong order. Um, you'd be looking at obviously Mega Drive, then you'd be looking at Saturn state, and then we'd be looking at the Sidewinder. Sorry about the wires. So you can see here, there's a clear correlation between these devices. Microsoft were very much looking at what Sega were doing, not to mention the fact that we had actually had Sega pattern, Sega pattern, Sega Saturn compatible, God, that's a tongue twister, uh, controllers for the PC. Um, admittedly, it was very, very niche as they came with the uh, NVIDIA Diamond. Is it Diamond 1? NV? Oh no, the MV1, the NVIDIA first ever graphics card NVIDIA did was actually based on the graphics technology in the Sega Saturn. In fact, it even used quads instead of triangle polygons, and it came with Sega Saturn ports and a controller in the box. So, you know, some PC players may have already been familiar with, with the, the Sega pad. Um, we did also have some weird uh, like Amstrad hybrid computers that had a Mega Drive built in. So they obviously had Mega Drive ports. So there was, you know, some crossover there. Um, and we ended up with the Sidewinder. So from there, you know, we can look at things like the original Saturn 3D pad, um, which we have looked at in another video, but we can also then look at that. Let me just fix up this wire a little bit. Ugh, whatever, that'll do. So that kind of became the Dreamcast pad. And we can see there that Microsoft's sort of desire to emulate what Sega were doing, um, you know, rightly so, because Sega were make, have always made amazing controllers. Uh, we ended up with the Xbox, which is very, very similar to the um, Dreamcast. And in fact, if these two had a baby, how, however that would work, it would probably look something like this, which then, of course, became the Xbox that we know and love today. 
Uh, the original controller was bigger, rounder, more similar to this actually, or maybe they scaled it back a bit. Because the Duke, I would say, looks more like a Dreamcast controller. I don't have one here for comparison. Whereas this does look very similar to the Sidewinder. So yeah, it is my firm belief that if, as I say, the Sidewinder and the Dreamcast controller had have had a baby, and in a way they did, it would have been the Xbox controller. And that's pretty much all I have to say on it for now. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do another video later on. This is just really an unboxing video, uh, playing around with doing unboxing. You see, I'm completely new to this, so if there's anything you particularly liked about this unboxing, um, then please do let me know in the comments, and obviously like and subscribe. Um, if there's anything you didn't like, there is a button for that as well, but if you would like to express your concerns, then please do so in the comments, as I would very much like to hear what you guys are up to. On that subject as well, do make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, not just because I need to get to a number of subscribers to be able to actually claim my name and have my official name day, uh, but also we have some more great content coming up. Um, as you can see, the Windows 98 machine, um, which has been featured in a couple of videos now, is just about ready to be built. And indeed, when it is, we will be playing some games with the Sidewinder, as well as various other things that I have um, dotted around. So yeah, this is going to be, once this is up and running, we're going to do a whole ton of Windows 98 stuff. So please do subscribe for that. Ring the bell so that you get a notification when those come up. Um, and in the meantime, why not go and have a look at the uh, previous Windows 98 videos that I did, uh, where you can see me disassembling and reassembling um, a really, really nice Windows 98 machine uh, from the component parts of various Windows 98 machines that I had kicking around. So in the meantime, Please do leave a comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, at Mindful of Tech on both. Get involved. Talk to me. Let me know what's going on. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you want me to do next. Until then, take care. Be well.